My name is Deborah Govardhan, and I'm going to talk you through the main findings of our recent paper, which focuses on how glutamine deprivation alters the origin and function of cancer cell exosomes. This has involved a close collaboration between three groups. The first led by Adrian Harris, a medical oncologist, the second by Clive Wilson, a fly cell biologist, and my lab, which focuses on human cancer cell signalling. Secreted extracellular vesicles have emerged as a new mode of communication between cells. They have attracted considerable attention in a wide range of physiological and pathological processes, for example on tumour cell and blood vessel growth. Exosomes are a type of extracellular vesicle which are made in the endocytic pathway in compartments thought to be RAB7 labelled late endosomes. Many are marked by a membrane associated molecule called CD63. Exosomes can carry different complex mixtures of bioactive molecules, including proteins and RNAs. This is likely to explain their diverse functions. There are, however, challenges in the field. For example, it has proven difficult to understand how different types of exosome are made. The exosome subtypes most relevant to cancer, and therefore which might be most appropriate to block, is also unclear. In our paper, we show that exosomes are not only made in late endosomes, but also in a completely different compartments called recycling endosomes, producing vesicles that we have termed RAB11A exosomes. To identify these exosomes, our collaborative team has combined studies in fly and human cancer cells. First, we use a unique model in fruit flies. With this, we can study exosome formation in a normal living cell called the secondary cell. The advantage of these cells is that they have unusually large endosomal compartments and are amenable to genetic manipulations. We showed that some RAB11 compartments contain vesicles that were secreted and some of these were marked by RAB11. In complementary work using human cancer cells, we found that the nutrient and microenvironmental sensing complex, mTORC1, controls the relative production of exosomes through the classic and alternate exosome generating pathways. So when glutamine levels are low, as might happen in a growing tumour, mTORC1 activity is reduced and there is a switch from classic exosomes marked by CD63 to the production of RAB11A exosomes. These RAB11A exosomes have enhanced pro-tumorogenic effects on cancer cells and blood vessels, both in vitro and in xenograft models in vivo. The growth-promoting activity is blocked by neutralising antibodies against the EGFR ligand amphiregulin, which is increased in levels in these vesicles. So in conclusion, the primary finding of our work is that there are at least two different types of exosome, one group made in late endosomes and the other made in RAB11A marked recycling endosomes. From the perspective of cancer, our work suggests that cellular stress pathways that may be activated as tumours increase in size may enhance the production of pro-tumorogenic RAB11A exosomes, which we propose promote tumour adaptation to the stresses.